channel has been basically geared towards guitar players who are part-time, pretty good players that want to kind of move into that professional arena and start playing full-time and maybe support themselves with it. That's kind of been my focus. Mm -hmm. um, I rarely do videos geared towards beginners. Um, however, I did have a request from one of my subscribers for a video about how to get started if you're an older um, if you're an older beginner and uh, I actually have a lot of tips for that because I had so many uh, beginners that were older when I was teaching so what I've, I've been te I taught for 35 years so at the age of 15 I was teaching and I had a lot of guys a lot of times I had students that were older than me and they'd never played before so I kind of came up with some tips for them uh, because their situation is different than I, my situation when I was nine years old. A, I didn't really want to practice, uh, but by the time I got to be 11, 12, I was really getting into it. And, you know, a kid, you, when you're a kid, you have tons of time to practice and ten, tons of motivation and not a lot of distractions. So that's a different situation for someone who's in their 40s or 50s or 60s that, that's picking up the guitar for the first time. So I have some real world tips for you. And uh, hopefully this, it, this can actually apply to anybody um, at any level, technically, um, a young person at an advanced level or an older person at a beginner level. It really doesn't matter. These tips will help you in, in your situation wherever you are. So uh, one thing I suggested to my um, new students that were particularly older, that had jobs, that had lives, they had families, they had things they had to do during the week, they had to go to the bank, they had to go, you know, whatever, they had stuff to do. Um, the goal was, uh, I said, look, just practice five minutes a day. And they'd look at me like, five minutes a day? That's not enough. I said, trust me, if you say that you have to practice 30 minutes or an hour a day, it'll never happen. It's like me going to the gym. I know that going to the gym is going to be an hour and a half. By the time I drive there, go to the gym, do everything, all the workout, and then drive back and then take a shower and all that, it's an hour and a half out of my day. And I don't think there's a day that I have an hour and a half extra to spare. So, unless I just don't sleep. So, um, basically the five minute rule is, the, the idea is it just pick up a guitar for five minutes and chances are that five will turn into 10, 15, or 20. Before you know it, you've probably practiced 30, but psychologically you didn't have to set aside 30 minutes. Um, but even if you just pick up the guitar every day for five minutes, that's better than picking it up for 30 minutes one day a week right before your guitar lesson. Um, and that's what so many, so many of my students would do is they, they say, oh, you know, they wouldn't progress. And it largely it was because they didn't practice and they didn't practice every day and get the guitar in their hands, okay? Another thing you can do is um, string mm -hmm. up your guitar with lighter strings. So if you're playing electric, maybe nines or tens, nines would be very light, um, lights would be tens. Um, extra light on acoustic would be tens, and then twelves would be your typical light strings on acoustic. So I wouldn't start with heavy strings. Also, I would maybe even take your guitar and have it set up so that it's, it plays a little easier. Lower the action. Maybe it may buzz a little bit, but you're really not going for tone. You just want to be able to pick up the guitar and enjoy playing it. Okay? Another thing, another common complaint among beginners, and this is of all ages, is that your fingertips hurt. Okay, well, I, one of the things I've suggested that, that new guitar players do when they first start playing is to just kind of dig your thumbnail if your left hand, if you're, if you're right-handed, you're, you're fretting with your left hand, the other way around if you're left-handed, um, dig your thumbnail into the pads of your left hand. Your pinky, your third finger, second finger, first finger. Just dig it in. You know, you could be working on something, you could be driving, you could be, although that might be distracted driving, I don't know. Any, any officers out there that can chime in on that? Uh, but I, you know, even still, I will occasionally dig my thumbnail into my pad just to toughen them up. Um, and that way, you, you get to that place where you don't even feel them any, any sooner. Um, you know, they're not really causing you problems. I don't have calluses anymore. I used to get calluses, and then occasionally I would, they would get, you know, worn out, and they'd fall off or break off or chip or crack or whatever. Fortunately, my skin has kind of relearned and just started growing um, a little tougher so that I, they're still pretty soft and they're great. Um, and so it was much, I feel like the tone is better than with a hard callus. Um, and I play all day long now. Um, okay, 
This one's really important too. It's actually really easy to do. Buy a guitar stand. Okay? And the reason is, this way you can keep a guitar out. You have it out in your living room, in your bedroom, in your office. I would suggest if you're generally, if you're taking up guitar later in life, most of my older guitar students had better guitars than I had. And um, if you can afford a couple guitars, you know, maybe put a wall hanger in your office and have a guitar hanging there. So if you have any downtime, you can grab the guitar down and put five minutes in every couple hours. You never know when you're going to have that extra time. Uh, same thing's true in your living room or your, or your, your man cave or whatever, woman cave, whatever. You've got a place where you, you generally are going to sit down and play guitar. Keep the guitar out of the case. It's, it's one less barrier between you and that time that you're going to spend with the instrument. This is true for any instrument, although I don't know if ever, everyone's going to have, want to have a drum set in their living room set up perpetually, but a lot of guys I know do. Um, okay, so those, that's real important stuff. Another thing is warming up. I've got some exercises. I'll post some links below, some very brutal exercises. I've got some beginner exercises. Uh, some of you don't need to spend a lot of time warming up just a little bit just to kind of get the blood to the fingers and kind of get it going um, I've got the there's some classical ones that I that I posted one two three four You could do that one or the one four three four two four three four It's a great one for is, uh, For kind of warm uh, working the pinky because the pinky tends to get neglected so much when we're playing um, another thing, another great tip, um, practice efficiently. Say you've got a song that you're working on and you got it down except for one chord is giving you a problem, okay? So for example, the song is a C chord for a couple bars, then G for a couple bars, A minor chord for a couple bars, and then you get to the F chord and you're like, oh, I can't quite get the F chord. And so basically what you want to do is it took me a while to get to that F chord. And so what you want to do is you want to, because if you're an older beginner, you have less time in your day and you have less time left in your life probably. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not making any uh, predictions here. But we all want to be efficient with our time. And so I find that if, I'm, uh, if I can just cut to the chase, instead of having to wait six bars to get to the problem chord, just make up an exercise. You're going to be your best teacher. Make up an exercise that really works that F chord, for example. So what I would suggest is do play F chords one strum, then C chord one strum, then F, then A minor, then F, then G, and back and forth. Just keep doing that as an exercise. Any you know chord you want to E minor, F A, F B flat. You can practice more efficiently, and then you'll find that you'll get that F chord down sooner because you focused on it. Um, I learned that years ago when I was studying classical guitar, and I would be working on some piece, maybe some Via Lobos piece, that was very difficult, but I'd have it down except for the last two bars, which just drive me crazy. Well, I would just sit there and practice the whole song and be all, oh, I'm loving this song, I'm loving this piece, and I'd get to the end and then I'd screw it up and I'd be like, oh man. And so what I did was I just looped those last two bars and I played them a thousand times until it was so second nature when I got to it, I didn't even have to think about it. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. Just be more efficient with your practice time. Okay. Um, the other thing I would suggest is learn simple songs. Don't, um, this is my last suggestion for now. And, and if you have some for me, put them down in the comments. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, approve them and put them so everybody can, can benefit from these. Um, but basically, don't try to learn really complex songs. Years, years ago, when I first started teaching, I had a student, an older student, who never played guitar before. He was a total beginner, and he wanted to learn Stairway to Heaven. That was like his, I know, it's stereotypical, but it's the song he wanted to learn. I must have taught that to a thousand students. Um, and, you know, we were, we were basically doing one chord a week. It took forever, and in a year, maybe we got through half of the song. He never got it down. He got discouraged. He quit taking lessons. He quit playing. And it was my fault because I should have said, no, 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 let's do this song instead. Let's start with some easy folk songs, some Bob Dylan, some Eagles, that kind of stuff. Start with some easy songs. So you want these little victories. Start with songs that are fun. There are just a few chords that you can get down, kind of get those chord changes down, get the strumming patterns down. Keep it simple for the most part. 
And then you see these little victories are much more encouraging than trying some grandiose thing like trying to learn some Eric Johnson song uh, that's just going to frustrate you and it's going to take you forever because you don't really even have a familiarity with the guitar as a whole. So these are just some basic, I think basic, but uh, good ideas for beginners that are a little older or just for any beginner or these are also great suggestions for, you know, established players who want to, to be more efficient and to get the most out of their time with the instrument. Okay? God bless you. I'll talk to you soon, and I hope this helps. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I can't believe how much my channel has exploded. I'm up to 7,000 su subscribers, over 7,000, which is just amazing, and it's grown a whole lot in the last month. So some of you are out there promoting me. I really appreciate that. I, I don't even know how. I'm just I'm so glad that you're watching, and uh, I appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Okay? I've got more coming. Don't worry.